uh, Mr. Rossetti, you're up. You're recognized for five minutes to present your testimony. Welcome. Thank you, Chairman McCaster, Ranking Member Graves, and honorable members of the committee for inviting me to testify on the Inflation Reduction Act today. Uh, I want to cover three key points about the Inflation Reduction Act. One is the overall potential environmental impact of the legislation. Two are the barriers to actually achieving that outcome. And three is the overall economic impact uh, as the incidence of subsidies are going to have to be paid for by taxes elsewhere in the economy and what effect this might have. Uh, so overall, the environmental impact at our street, we took a, a look at the total estimated cost of the IRA and just took at honest value the CBO's estimate and, and said, okay, you know, if this is true, how much clean energy can this buy? And compare that to the Energy Information Administration's projected baseline. Uh, and looking at that, the sheer volume subsidy, which is hundreds of billions of dollars, does result in an increase in purchases. And we would expect about a 37% increase in clean electricity uh, production over the baseline and some modest effects in the transportation sector, uh, with overall a potential of about 12% emission reduction relative to 2005 levels, which is pretty consistent with the rhodium group that estimated about 8 to 12% and other studies. The caveat to this, though, is the low cost of renewables and high investment potential already means that most of this technology would have already been deployed uh, irrespective of the IRA. So we estimate about 67% of the clean electricity subsidies will go to clean energy production that would have occurred even absent the IRA. Uh, similarly, with the EV tax credits, we do see uh, a huge increase in, uh, uh, in the, or excuse me, we see a, a, a large amount of the subsidies go to EVs that probably would have been deployed anyway, as the yeah, I expect so close to 6 million new EVs being deployed and, uh, and the tax rates support about 1 million new EVs. In this environment, we expect that the additionality of these subsidies and the potential environmental benefit is mitigated by the fact that most of the money would go to efforts that would already occur uh, without the IRA. In terms of actually getting to that potential 12% emission reduction, it's largely locked behind regulatory factors. Uh, increasingly, we're hearing from the clean energy space that we're facing regulatory barriers rather than cost barriers to new deployment. So there's close to 1,000 gigawatts of low carbon electricity and interconnection queues in the United States right now. The interconnection queue timelines have gone from uh, about two years to close to four years. And we hear from some developers that it can even be about eight years in some areas. Uh, the transmission, uh, adequacy is, is not really good. The transmission congestion costs and many of the interconnections are increasing, you know, sometimes by multiple times. Uh, we also have uh, increasing curtailment in the renewable space. So a lot of areas are already saturated with new renewables and deploying more renewables means that there's a, a diminishing return. So without that increased transmission and availability to actually get new clean energy to where it needs to go, you're not going to get environmental benefit. And the repeat project, which is probably one of the most optimistic estimates of the IRA's effects, uh, that estimated that about 80% of their emission potential is locked behind transmission growth. So actually getting to this environmental outcome requires structural changes in, in regulatory policy, especially on the permitting. It's been very interesting. At our street, we looked at the BOE and BLM's permitting uh, uh, for clean energy, and we noted that about 42% of DOE's projects were related to clean energy, conservation, transmission, only 15% were fossil fuel, uh, similar ratios in BLM. And just looking at the federal permitting dashboard today, 65% of the energy projects are renewable projects. So addressing these issues are, are key to clean energy growth and are largely absent from the IRA. Additionally, it's important to consider the full economic impacts of any legislation. Every dollar that is gonna be spent on subsidy by the US government is going to result in a dollar of tax somewhere else. Uh, so who's going to pay that tax is largely going to determine the overall economic impact of any legislation. Uh, so when it comes to the IRA, where we know that uh, a huge portion of it is going to be from corporate taxes, we also have to ask, okay, who's going to be paying those taxes? The CBO notes that higher corporate rates are going to overall reduce the investment, the incentives to invest in the United States are going to have negative economic effects. Uh, the tax foundation, similarly, and looking at the IRA, estimates about a 0.2% lower GDP in the long run and uh, lower long run incomes across the board for Americans. Um, there are some positive effects of the IRA, namely the deficit reduction, uh, and these can offset to a certain degree the negative impacts of the tax increases. 
Uh, but overall, when we look at the studies, it generally shows about a wash. Uh, so with that, you know, it's important to consider that what are we getting? How much is it going to cost? And who's going to pay for it? And I look forward to your questions. Thank you.